Hey YouTubers, this is Charlie. Welcome back to my Game of Thrones Season 4 countdown. And if you hadn't noticed, I just changed my channel avatar. It's just meant to look a little bit more like my face. So for this video, I wanted to talk about my top 10 characters on the show, especially given where things are headed in Season 4. The thing is, you know, from season to season, my favorites tend to change, so my favorites from Season 1 aren't necessarily my favorites right now. All that being said, as I, you know, work my way down to my own number one favorite character, the big question we need to ask and try to answer is, who is the most important character in A Song of Ice and Fire? Not necessarily the coolest or the most powerful character, the most important character. Like if you had to say Song of Ice and Fire is about one person, that would be the character we're talking about. You know, the most important. So real quick before we get started though, I'm going to do one more countdown video tomorrow morning and then Sunday night I'll be posting my review video and we'll just get into it. So. Also, if you're finding me for the first time, I'm doing a weekly giveaway for each of the review videos. All you have to do to participate is be a subscriber and leave a comment on each of those review videos. So I'll provide more details about that tomorrow though. So let's get started. Dragons are coming. So here's my top 10 characters on the show. Careful for potential spoilers if you're not caught up on season 3 or the books up to where we're at in season 3 right now. But here we go. Number 10, Dario. Or I guess you could say the new Dario since we're also kind of talking about actors. He mostly makes the list because the character is such a big part of Daenerys' story, and she's also on this list. I feel like the people who are most important to the most important people are sometimes also the most interesting characters. Dario, as we've seen him so far, is essentially, you know, the special forces leader of Daenerys' army. You know, yes, Grey Worm is technically the leader of the army, but Dario is the person she calls on for the most important political missions and doing the covert dirty work. The swagger the character has is also just so much fun given how proper the rest of Danny's inner circle is. You have two knights who are almost yes men and a few influential women, but Dario is one of the few people that just kind of does whatever Dario wants to do. Adding sex into the equation, you know, with him and Danny makes it so much more fun and actually funny when you talk about his relationship with the other male advisors in her inner circle. I'm hoping since they recast the role that they do give him a lot more scenes from the books and based on the clips we've seen so far of him, he looks really promising so the new actor looks like it's going to be really awesome. Number 9, Sansa Stark. You may have written her off earlier just because of all the shit she's taken from the Lannisters so far but I think that she's going to surprise you in season 4. We also have to acknowledge how much Sophie Turner has matured as an actress since the show started. I feel like they keep giving Sansa more to do each season just because Sophie Turner has become so much more compelling. You know, as things get progressively worse for her character. I also want to say that because of Sophie Turner, I love TV show Sansa so much more than book Sansa right now. One of the really interesting, unintentional side effects of her character's Demeter is, is that she's kind of viewed as a flower. You know, other characters tend to overlook her, with the exception of Joffrey. So she gets to be front and center for some of the biggest and best scenes just because, you know, no one is really looking at her. I'm really looking forward to seeing how Sophie Turner interprets Sansa as all these new, you know, season 4 mega events start to unfold. Number 8, Melisandre, the Lady in Red. Even though Daenerys brought dragons back into the world, Melisandre is the most visible symbol of magic on the show. She has this whole sex dynamic to it that really makes you afraid and turned on at the same time. Like imagine how Gendry felt with the sex leeches, you know, disgusting, terrifying, and awesome at the same time. She's also one of the wisest characters in the show next to Tyrion and Varys. From an educational standpoint, she kind of feels like a maester who just isn't a maester. They really did tease the wall in that last Dragonstone scene from Season 3, so what I'm most looking forward to from Melisandre in Season 4 is how she interacts with Jon Snow and the other characters at the wall, and watching Jon Snow interact with her. He has a really spotty track record with sexy gingers, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Number 7, Oberyn Martell, the Red Viper of Dorne. For a lot of people who haven't read the books, he's a totally new character, which is one of the reasons why I like him so much. You know, he's fresh meat for the King's Landing grinder. He also brings Dorne into the story in a much bigger way. It's like a whole region of Westeros we just haven't seen yet. One of the coolest things about, you know, big epic stories like Ice and Fire is that they're literally big places, so you don't just get stuck with the same group of characters for seven or eight seasons. Of all the new characters coming in the near future, I think he's one of the best. I really hope we actually get to see more of Dorne in Season 5, but this year, I'm most looking forward to watching him fight. That's essentially what his reputation is, being one of the best fighters in Westeros. And because of the different culture of Dorne, he has this really unique fighting style that's different from all the Knights of King's Landing. We've actually seen some clips of that, so it's really looking awesome. Number 6, Brienne of Tarth, probably the only true knight in Westeros. 
Brienne was so awesome in season 3, and watching Gwendolyn Christie with Nikolai Coster Waldo was one of my favorite things. I could watch a whole season of just the two of them together. World's best odd couple. Brienne is probably the most noble person in Westeros right now. Even as early as that first episode, you got the sense that just because people are knights didn't mean they're honorable, you know, playing the Game of Thrones and all. Brienne is one of the only characters that does not give a shit about any of that. She just has this beautiful dream of knighthood, and it works so well when you juxtapose it with someone like Jaime Lannister, who essentially, you know, up to a certain point, doesn't care about anything. You know, I think he thinks he cares about Cersei, but he has doubts about, you know, even that, so it's like pure belief and nihilism just walking around next to each other. The thing that I'm looking forward to most from her character is watching her adapt to things in King's Landing, because it's just a cesspool. But remember, she also kind of gets credit for bringing Jaime back, so I'm really looking forward to seeing him try to repay her in a really earnest way. Number 5, Arya Stark, Stabby Death Machine in Training. All the clips of Arya that we've seen from the trailers have been action scenes and her in the middle of a warrior training montage with Needle. I just love how dark she is. It's this whole level of complexity that Sansa hasn't quite got to, and something that goes way beyond where Jon Snow or Bran are, despite all those characters have been through. She's one of the few characters on the show that actually embraces the direction she's headed, you know, revenge machine. How appropriate that we saw the Titan of Bravos in one of those trailers, you know, kind of heralding the return of the Faceless Ones or heading in that direction. On top of all that, you also can't talk about her without talking about the Hound. You know, of all the twosomes on the show, she and the Hound are my second favorite, you know, behind only Jamie and Brienne. It says a lot about who the strongest characters are when you see who rubs off on who. For instance, Brienne is a much stronger character than Jamie right now, so she rubs off on him. And Arya is a much stronger character than the Hound, in a really intense dark way, so she rubs off on him. And it's just hilarious. It really is funny when you think about how a small character has such a big influence over such a vicious character like the Hound. Number 4, Jon Snow. He's such an easy fan favorite because you feel like the character has so much potential and Kit Harington is just so awesome at it. There are actually a lot of things in the story that make you feel like he's destined for greatness. So, you know, he's in my top 5 mostly because I feel like he's going to be one of the focal points of the story as things move into Winds of Winter. I think one of the biggest problems of Season 3 was that he had to go off on his own with the Wildlings. You know, yes, it was a ton of fun watching him react to Egret. You know, guess which one of them had the stronger personality? But he didn't really get to interact with any of the other characters. I love Ciaran Hines as Mance Raider, but he was barely in the story. And a lot of the Wildlings, with the exception of Egret and Lord of Bones, were very forgettable. Giants notwithstanding. The thing that I'm most looking forward to from him in Season 4 is him taking more of a leadership role. You know, it's time to grow up, boy. We've actually seen some scenes of him and Sam in the library, so I'm really looking forward to them dealing with, you know, one, the Wildling Army, two, angry ex-girlfriend Gingers, and three, hopefully, some new White Walkers. Number three, Tyrion Lannister. So, despite being stuck in what looks like the Black Cells for most of this season, I feel like going forward, he's going to be one of the most, if not the most, important character. Tyrion is one of the most interesting characters in this show just in general for two really big reasons. One, George R. R. Martin has said that he identifies with him the most, so I feel like he expresses that character in a much deeper way. And two, Peter Dinklage is one of the best actors on the show. There was actually this really cool thing Dinklage said about acting in a sword and sandal show like Game of Thrones. He said that because it's such a grand setting, actors tend to overdo their performances a lot, like cranking the acting knob to 11, but he has this really subtle way of delivering lines or saying things and using gestures that just comes across so much more effectively than yelling your lines ever could. That's why I feel like HBO kind of makes him one of the centerpieces of the show, you know, from a marketing standpoint, next to Amelia Clark. The thing that I'm most looking forward to from Tyrion in Season 4 is watching him repay all his debts, because a Lannister pays all his debts, sometimes with revenge. Number 2, Jaime Lannister. So there's been so much Jaime in all the trailers and clips that I feel like next to Tyrion, he's going to be one of the most important characters in King's Landing this season. Yes, Purple Wedding and all, there's lots of stuff going on, but think about the entire season. As of the end of Season 3, he's undergone one of the biggest character transformations next to Theon. There's so much of Brienne's nobility in him now, I just can't wait to see how he deals with all the shit going down in King's Landing. The Golden Hand is just the icing on the cake. It's just a visual sign of that transformation, you know, on top of Oathkeeper and being part of the White Cloaks. Mark my words, by the end of Season 4, Jamie will be one of your favorite characters if he is not already. I would say the thing I'm looking forward to most from Jamie in Season 4 is seeing him deal with all the biggest changes in King's Landing. 
like Cersei, for instance, who is changing a lot herself. He's going to be leading the White Cloaks, and I don't think he's going to become another Barristan Selmy, but I do think he's going to try and become the kind of person Bran would respect and admire. Plus, there's him learning to fight with his left hand with Bronn. They actually changed that from the books for all you readers out there. And my number one favorite character, Daenerys Targaryen. You know, just thinking about season four, I feel like she's going to be one of the most important characters this year. Joffrey is king of Westeros, but he's really just a figurehead. Daenerys is earning her kingdom, one freed slave at a time. You know, then there's the dragons on top of all that. Of all the things HBO pumped up in the trailers, it was definitely the size of the dragons now. You know, even on the Black Friday South Park episode, it was all about dragons are coming. They're collectively always going to be at least the second most important characters in A Song of Ice and Fire, no matter what happens. And they're there because of Danny. The thing that I'm most looking forward to from Daenerys in season four is her trying to be a real queen. You know, not just a general like she was in season three. That story arc was all about conquering. Now she has to learn how to rule, but think of it as like a practice run for the Iron Throne. And just to acknowledge Amelia Clark's contributions, you know, she's done such an amazing job of portraying someone who is essentially just a little girl learning to be a general and then the mother of dragons and now a queen on top of all that. Remember, Daenerys isn't a whole lot older than Arya, so we should think of her as like a child leader prodigy. But now it's your turn. Let me know who is your favorite character on the show and who is your favorite actor on the show too. They don't necessarily have to be the same. So like I said, tomorrow I'll be posting my next countdown video. That'll be my top 10 moments from season three. And then that night I'll be doing my episode run review. Be sure to subscribe to get everything and participate in the giveaway. It's gonna be a ton of fun. Right now, click here to watch all my other countdown videos and finish getting ready. And click here to watch all my trailer breakdowns. Thank you so much for watching. Dragons are coming tomorrow. The wait is over. High fives, everyone.